Uh, we showed what happened in Luxembourg on Friday with a DVD, and I was talking about, um, it was a Roman Catholic church I went to with um, Father Frank, and, and frankly, huh, um, it, it was much more inspiring to be there than to be here, um, you know, uh, in the sense that people had respect to the things of God. I find some people have no respect. Um, you know, our God, we've come to worship, uh, when you get a flippancy uh, and you can go through a ritual, you just might as well be going through religion. Uh, and that's deadly. I hate religion with everything in me. Uh, and so does God. Uh, and a lot of people get trapped. And I was talking uh, on uh, Friday about one of the things, you know, I, I've been on to people about fasting, you know, the stupidity that somehow you have to starve yourself to death to get God to do what uh, you think he should do. Fasting is not a Christian principle, it's heathen. And I keep telling people that, and they keep wanting to argue, because... Uh, they were brought up to believe in a certain way. Uh, and, you know, from your, the day of your birth, your culture doesn't determine Christianity. So when we talk of a multicultural society, what we're talking of is an anti-Christian society. Because worshipping culture is deadly. Uh, if someone says, well, I'm this way because it's my culture, well, they need deliverance because we should be this way because Christ lives in us. We're Christians. We give up our culture. Is that plain? Uh, I, I was explaining, I walked into the master class, you know, and, and got talking uh, with the pastors. And you, you realize their whole thinking is cultural, not Christian. Uh, and it's terrible that uh, a lot of people for truth take what their parents said and their um, school taught them and that becomes truth to them. And unfortunately if it's not biblical it becomes very destructive because truth outside of Christ is not truth at all. Uh, and so I, I just wanted to spend a little while kind of getting your brains engaged, it's Sunday morning, and what better time to wake up your brain? You don't use it all week, so uh, you have, you know, the chance to think. Um, because it's amazing how people would love to, you know, church should be a place of entertainment. No, it should be a place of where we talk of the things of God. Uh, and we make sure we, we concentrate on the things of God. And, and to me, um, I, I, there I was in, in a class, and, and the pastors, you know, they can't stand the idea that truth, let, let me take a simple truth that I took on Friday, for, uh, tithing. Now, if you're going to take the Torah and you're going to apply it to a Christian in one part, the Bible says if you imply it, in one, um, imply it in one part, you've got to apply the whole. Now if you apply the whole, that means you've got to do everything a Jew does. Now, I don't have any objection to someone teaching tithing as a biblical uh, truth for Jews. However, our righteousness should exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Now, my question to them was, if the propagators of tithing who preach it every week, if it were necessary to believe in it and to do it as legalistically as some do, I know some people would work it out to the penny. They don't want to give God too much. So they work their tenth out to, you know, uh, and they come up and they ask me questions like this. Um, is it gross or net? 
you know, uh, because they don't want to pay God too much. You know, but they feel obligated because of all the curses that they've been told are going to mount up on them, that they better get it to the penny. You know? I mean, how ridiculous can you get? But there's some people who would not uh, uh, pay a penny more than that which they think they can get away with. But it's not a biblical thing anyway for Christians. And when you tell them that, they say, yippee! You mean, I don't have to give any... No, I didn't say that. But that's how thinking goes. You see, law is a terrible... I don't want to be under law, I'm under grace. And grace is a good thing. Now, the Bible says that if you break the law in one part, you've broken it all. So I asked these pastors that wanted to propagate tithing, and I said, all right, if you really believe in it, here's the deal. And this did not please them. The rule of the Levites, who lived off the tithe, was they were not allowed any inheritance, they were not allowed to own anything, they were not allowed to give an inheritance to their children at all. God was their inheritance, that was it. And so, let's tell the televangelists, your four million dollar home has to go to God's work and you can't own your Rolls Royces that you bought or your jet planes because you're not entitled to any inheritance. So I said, providing you teach that with tithing and you keep the whole law, I have no problem. I didn't have many volunteers. They suddenly thought, you mean, uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, you can't, have the law in one aspect and not apply it in every aspect, can you? You're all going quiet. Well, is that right or wrong? Hello? I mean, are they Levites? No. But they want to impose, as Paul said, they want to impose the law on people. And how, how, oh, you know, did you pay, you robbed God? If you don't. I mean, there's all sorts of legalistic things people come under and they don't even realize they're under it. It's like uh, fasting isn't a Christian principle. They say, oh, well, Jesus fasted. No, he didn't. He was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness and there were no food there. Because after 40 days, the serpent came and he said, Look, if you're who you say you are, turn those stones into bread. Now, if there was food to eat, it wouldn't have been a temptation at all. There were no food. So it wasn't that he went out there not to eat. It was he went over the wilderness where there was nothing. And you'll remember, when the multitudes came... And they stayed with him a couple of days and the disciples said, send them away. He fed them because he wasn't on the side of fasting and going without food. He was on the side of eat, drink and enjoy.